Hi, I'm Jeff Yager. I'm a professor of chemistry, biochemistry, and physics. And I'm Vladimir Bohika. I'm a professor of chemistry at School of Molecular Science. So, Vladi, today we're making a video to look at uh, another discussion question in um, Physical Chemistry for the Life Sciences, the second edition that um, Peter Atkins and uh, uh, DePaulo have um, uh, published. And uh, specifically, this is out of chapter four, which is in chemical equilibrium, which I would say is really now getting at the heart of you know, chemistry and biochemistry. This is really getting into what I think of as the meat of, of what any chemist or biochemist would start caring about in the in topics of thermodynamics. And, and it's specifically looking at a principle that um, you would say is at the heart of equilibrium to some degree uh, you know, in this, which is explain Le Chatelier's uh, principle in terms of thermodynamic quantities. And, um, you know, some of a, um, you know, the general ideas of this, which is that it's, you know, it tries to, you know, minimize any perturbation, you know, in the system, in a thermodynamic system of yeah. some sort. <clears throat> uh, probably what I would like to start saying is that um, Le Chatelier principle, you know, it, it goes, as you said, to the very heart of thermodynamics in a very deep sense. But it, it's, it, it's, it's kind of an empirical rule. Right. But you see, the, the, you might And there describe, are exceptions. I mean, yeah. like, it, it's, you know, especially when you get into, you know, pressure. As, but, but I like it because it's one of those where you can look at any type of perturbation, whether it be right. a thermodynamic variable like temperature or pressure. You can also look at a catalyst. You know, why, you know, does it, you know, so I like it because it, it is that kind of general thing that usually plays out yeah. uh, what, across a wide range. One of my range. favorite books in thermodynamics, Callen's book. Yeah. You see, yeah. he, he uses this postulate approach and what he calls the, the fundamental problem of thermodynamics is what happens when a system is at equilibrium and you remove a constraint, you remove whatever constraint. So what is the new equilibrium state? So, and, and this is the essential problem of thermodynamics. You, you have an equilibrium state, you do something, you perturb you the system, yeah. you change it, you increase the pressure or decrease the pressure, you change the temperature, you change the composition. Uh, the number of moles, yeah, exactly. So in which direction does equilibrium move and what is the new equilibrium state? This is the fundamental problem of thermodynamics. Yeah. And he approaches it from the point of view of the, of the second law, yeah. which of course can be transformed. Yeah, I love, like you said, Callan, instead of four laws, he has... For, in a sense, for postulates. Right. And most of them are entropy driven, which to me makes a lot of sense. It's really entropy that is the con. I mean, you know, conservation of energy is something we almost all had a handle on before thermo, you know, um, uh, as, as kind of a consequence of thermodynamics. But it's really at the heart entropy, you know, that Callan gets at immediately and you know, the maximum entropy and how it causes all these other, you know, equilibrium conditions. Yeah, and, and of course, the fundamental difference between the first and the second law, as you said, when I consider a process that either happens in nature or, or it doesn't, if it happens or if it doesn't happen, in both cases, energy is conserved. So if you transfer heat from a, a hot, from a cold body to a hot body, that doesn't happen in nature. It happens the other way. But it doesn't matter which way it happens, energy is preserved. However, entropy it dramatically, is dramatically different in both processes. That, that's why thermodynamics without entropy doesn't make any sense because all processes, spontaneous, non-spontaneous, reversible, non-reversible, whatever you do, are energy conserving. Yeah. But they are not entropy conserving. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, I think the other heart of why um, anyone in molecular sciences, you know, has, you know, spends most of their time really grappling with entropy is because it's your connection to the molecular frame. It's, your, you know, through Boltzmann, it's your connection to information, you know, mm -hmm. through Shannon, um, et cetera. Like it really gives you a handle on it from a lot of different, you know, perspectives. Um, so... Um, and here, like you said, like when we're talking about it from chemical terms, it's hard not to look at, um, you know, delta to, to free energy. What we think of is the avail because because we're almost always, you know, thinking about this. For example, what you've shown here with composition, where you're looking at things, 
you know, through the free energy because you're looking at things, how the chemical potential, how a molar, you know, how the chemical potential uh, of things as you change the number of moles of reactants to products is going. I mean, that's yeah. at the heart of chemistry. Right. You know? And, you know, before we continue, let me go back. You see, the way Le Chatelier's principle is usually stated is where the system at equilibrium is subject to a disturbance. The composition of the system adjusts so as to tend to minimize the effect of the disturbance. So, see, they talk about the composition, but in some cases, you can even apply Le Chatelier principle and the composition doesn't change. Because then the question is if I increase the pressure, what would the system do? Right. If I decrease the temperature, what would the system do? And sometimes it doesn't have to change the composition. You, you can actually do your, run your experiment or, or your Gedanken experiment in thermodynamics or your real experiment under such a condition that that composition is not going to change. Of course, if you have a chemical reaction there, this is usually what happens. But if you have a gas, no chemical reaction, you can also use Le Chatelier principle and say, if I increase the pressure and I keep the, the volume constant, what is going to happen to the temperature? Right, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when so is like Le you said, it works very generally, but you can't blame you know, a book like, or, or the topic we're doing for, for focusing on composition because that's at the heart of chemical work. Exactly. I mean, you know, chemists by definition or biochemists are there to change stuff, to change the number of moles of things. Right. So they, they focus, you know, in, like you said, in this book and in anyone that focuses on chemical thermodynamics or biochemical thermodynamics on composition. But as you pointed out, in physics textbooks or in ones that look at it, it's a much more general than they often give in a sense examples of it. To exactly. Be. And also, it, it immediately points out to a limitation of this. If for some reason you, you change two parameters in the, in the system, then the Chatelier principle is not necessarily going to help you. Right. Because when two things change, the Chatelier principle is limited because it tries to reduce the impact of one or the other, but then what it does with the other one that is also changing, it's not obvious. So you have to work the problem in more general terms. So in, in this particular way, if you change simultaneous pressure and temperature, then it's not obvious what is going to happen. So, so that's why, you know, the, the, the question as discussion question explain in terms of thermodynamic quantities, because when we do it in terms of free energy, we don't have this limitation. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, go let's go on. Okay. So, and I think that, you know, more or less covers what you've, uh, you know, shown here as well, you know. So, um, and then, um, like you said, like, uh, um, you know, you've, we've written the, you know, what I think of as the fundamental equation for, for the Gibbs free energy, where, you know, just that, like you're looking at the two terms that most people, you know, sit there and, and talk about, well, if you changed, you know, temperature a little bit, how would that affect you know, the composition of it, if you changed pressure a little bit. And, you know, usually they go into examples of, you know, usually with pressure, they almost always use gases because gases are the only thing that, uh, you know, if you create more gases or less gases on one side of reaction, you really shift equilibrium, you know, quite a lot. You know? Right, and, and it's quite interesting that this quantity here, which is the quantity that is directly related to composition because this is the change in the number of particles of the number of moles, then you can write this... Well, that's the equilibrium constant. Yes. I mean, that's, that is the equilibrium constant. You can write this, this is the stoichiometric coefficients right. times a parameter that is the advance of the reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll either use that or, or Q, like, uh, like right. a quotient, a, a reaction right. quotient is and a common way And then you have this yeah. extremely important concept <clears throat> that the sum over j of mu j nu j, this is the reaction potential. Yeah. And, and this quantity is the one that was represented in the previous slide. So you have to give, I, we talk about this particular plot, I think. Uh, in, in another, another discussion yeah. as well, yeah. So it, it tells you that what happens, you, the system is at equilibrium, you change something in this direction, so the system tries to restore the position of equilibrium if you wish. So this is exactly what Le Chatelier principle is telling you, but this is telling you the same thing as Le Chatelier principle, but in a much more general way, because this quantity does not require one of the two to be constant or anything. I mean, you, you, you can, so, so you have essentially this 
embodies the the mathematical and physical formulation in terms of thermodynamic quantities of the Chatelier principle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you know, oftentimes in chemistry, as you've shown here, what we're often doing is playing. Um, you know, when we talk about the equilibrium uh, coefficient, that's usually, you know, that is just looking at that chemical work term. That's just looking at how the number of moles of reactants and products do, right? At constant temperature and pressure when you have no other, you know. Um, but we often, you know, uh, talk about this, you know, in terms of, you know, how the enthalpy and entropy changes are. In fact, it kind of brings to the point you said earlier when you start changing two things at once. In biochemistry, it's very famous, right, to say, you know, how, how much is this enthalpically driven versus entropically driven, right? And you, in fact, you'd say it's, it's one of the most common things done is to, you know, look at, um, you know, the fundamental equation where, you know, you look at it at constant T and P and in a sense you end up just getting that delta G is equal to an equilibrium, you know, is, is related to a ln of an equilibrium constant. But you can also, you know, write this as just from its fundamental uh, that it's, you know, H minus TS and assuming right. constant temperature, you get kind of your, uh, your uh, delta G is, you know, a, delta H minus T delta S, right? And, you know, it's that here where biochemists use that so often to think about enthalpically driven versus entropically driven, which one is more responsible for some spontaneity. Right, and as, 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 as you said, I mean, you can write down here the other equation. Oh, delta yeah, yeah, G exactly. is equal I, to yeah. delta H minus T. Yeah, once it's change. added, yeah, yeah. So then, of course, there's no one-to-one -one correspondence between these things, but this is the same quantity. So then we can discuss whether it is enthalpy or entropy driven. driven, and we see that it depends dramatically on the temperature. Yeah. So we know we can I'm, always, you know, we can always go high enough in temperature to get things in. You know, entropy always entropy, wins. If yes. you're willing to go high enough, yeah. entropy will always. What you know? What win. you cannot do, and and this is exactly the, you see, the the the, his, the thing is, if you have a, a a reaction for which delta H is positive and delta S is negative, there's no temperature that is going to help you because. Under these conditions, the delta G is always yeah. positive. So you, if, if this is the case, you need to put either an external energy source to drive a process like this. And this is what we discussed last yeah, time. Yeah, we had a whole discussion question on how sometimes you, you have to bring in. Or you, know, you have to couple a chemical reaction where this condition exists to another chemical reaction that actually has delta G for the second reaction smaller than zero. And, and then the, the combined delta G will be smaller than zero, provided this is larger than that. So all of this is Le Chatelier principle in, in, a, in a very general way. And of course, we, we keep using it. It could have disappeared from the literature and even from teaching because it's like the, the, concept, the concept of mole. Initially, it was something. Now it's just a number of particles. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an Avogadro number of particles, and that's it. Yeah. But in the old days, the definition was, was way more complicated because people didn't know how to solve this dilemma that you needed to count molecules and weigh them at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> very hard to imagine how to do, do this. Do that, yeah, exactly. So now the original discussion about mole disappeared. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just an Avogadro number. But the, you know the same with the Chatelier principle, but it's still in the books because it's actually quite useful. Yeah, yeah, like you said, it's very general across things. Okay, well, thanks for the discussion today. As always. <laughs>